question. Okay, thank you. What is the reason that made you be? I'm sorry. What is the reason that made you to become a doctor? Uh, it's a long time back. Um, I became a doctor in um, 2001, so that's 20 years. And I studied for about 10 years. Um, I wanted to do different jobs when I was a teenager. And eventually I wanted to become a doctor, um, I think because I wanted to help people. And at the time I decided I would want to become a doctor, I already knew, I think, that I wanted to be a doctor overseas. Okay, doctor overseas. Yes, meaning working in developing countries in situations of crisis that need humanitarian aid. So I think it was all at the same thing, at the same time. I wanted to be a doctor and work abroad, help people. My uncle was a doctor. Uh, I don't know if that influenced me, maybe. I was quite close to my uncle, so maybe that had a role. But mainly I wanted to, yes, help people and like that as a doctor. Thank you. You want to help people and have a role model yes. as a doctor. Okay. Also, but himself didn't work in humanitarian aid. He worked. He had a practice in France, so that was not. He was partly perhaps a role model, mm -hmm. but I had my sort of own vision of working as a doctor abroad mm -hmm. in context of crisis, mm -hmm. refugee situation, war conflicts. Things like this. Cap. Okay, thank yes. you. Cap. Okay, our next question. What's the most impressive thing that you have ever had experienced as a doctor? Um, you see, in my career mm -hmm. as a doctor, uh, I, I joined Doctors Without Borders as soon as I became a doctor. And so I worked as a doctor providing care for a few years. Mm -hmm. But then after that, I quickly started to do sort of coordination of project. Okay. And mm -hmm. my career sort of shifted fairly quickly mm -hmm. to do management of project coordination of relief operation and then management of NGOs and management of research projects. So there are different sort of, uh, yes, very important experience in that. But one of them, I will tell you, is working really very important in my mind is working as a physician to treat HIV disease. HIV people. Yes, to treat HIV disease because when I was sent to Thailand to work for Doctors Without Borders, the French name Médecins Sans Frontières, when I was sent to Thailand to work for MSF, I was sent to start project of treatment of HIV disease mm -hmm. with antiretroviral treatment. Mm -hmm. And antiretroviral treatment are those cocktail medicine to uh, to to treat HIV infection. Okay. And when we started that, we provided those treatments to people who were really very very sick, very sick. Very sick. And those medicines are amazing. For oh, those medicines amazing. do to people, it's yeah. amazing what it does. It brings people back to life, like oh. almost, like. almost from dying condition back to life. Not all of them; some of them die, of them die. but most of them, oh, even if they start from very very advanced illness, mm -hmm. can recover 
And as a physician, it's extremely gratifying and, and motivating to have the ability to bring back someone to life yes. when that person is about to die. And so that souvenir, uh, I have it since my early days in Thailand working for NSF and then working in Africa also for larger project and providing those medicines to many, many, many people, as many as possible to sort of, yeah, save as many people as possible. So that I will always remember, yeah, that experience of uh, having medicines that really can change uh, someone's life. Oh, it's yes, wonderful to save uh, people life yeah, and help yeah. uh, rescue people from, yeah. from the crisis. Yeah. There is six yeah. Yeah. And different physicians, of course, including in your audience, different physicians, of course, treating different illnesses, have that same experience. And I'm sure they have the same feeling. Oh, okay. In emergency medicine, in ICU, mm. pediatric ICU, or many other um, departments or disciplines of medicine when you have the ability to save someone. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a wonderful feeling. Yes, yeah. it's so really myself nice was with HIV treatment in particular. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And is it wonderful this time uh, you are the doctors sent to Thailand from uh, some Médecins sans frontières, Médecins Doctors sans frontières. Without Borders. Yes. Border. Okay. Yes. Yes. So we were in Thailand working in Surin province, Surin, uh, and working with the hospital. Mm -hmm. And we collaborate with the hospital to bring those new treatments because they were very expensive. Oh, that sounds very expensive. So very, very expensive at that time. So mm -hmm. the cost was the barrier. To treatment. So the organization brought those medicines mm -hmm. and the project to treat HIV patients with Serene Hospital. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that experience of mm -hmm. uh, using those treatment was amazing. Mm -hmm. Which year? Sorry, which year? 2001. 2001. 20 years ago. Yes. 20 years ago. That's a very expensive. Yeah, that's what, yes, yeah. at that time it was very, very expensive. Now it's very cheap. Yeah. And uh, now Thailand has, actually for many years, mm -hmm. Thailand already has a national program of treatment of HIV. Yes. For all people living with HIV in Thailand. Mm -hmm. And treatment is very cheap and it's produced locally by GPO. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, but at that time it was really, really very expensive, very difficult. You could not get that. Nobody had access to that at that time. So people were dying, just dying one after another. Thank you for Cut. sharing this. That's really inspire people. Cut. To Thank you, Inspire the other doctors to help other people. Thank you. Uh, inspire, doctor, help people. Thank you. Uh, so let's move to the next question. Uh, what are your inspiration or motivation behind your decision to work with a non-profit organization for human health and development? Yeah, um, you see, it's back to the original question is for me, being a doctor, I just wanted to be a doctor to work in places where doctors can have most impact or where there is biggest needs, there are biggest needs. And so for me, this was, this was with non-profit organization humanitarian mm -hmm. aid organization and in France you know Doctors Without Borders is very famous mm -hmm. everybody knows Doctors Without Borders, Médecins Sans Frontières, MSF let's call it, no? MSF. MSF. MSF, everybody knows MSF so I knew MSF and I really liked the work that they do mm -hmm. sending doctors and other professionals, mm -hmm. sending them to different countries where there are crises mm -hmm. and where MSF can have an impact. Mm -hmm. It was just my motivation. I just wanted to do that and be a doctor in those situations. Yeah. Can I add, I add more, more question? Though. How do you know medicine 
Médecins sans frontières en France. Yeah, just everybody knows it. Yeah, everybody knows. You see, for example, in Thailand, everybody I think would know the Red Cross. Okay. Ah, Sapakantat. Make up. Sapakantat Thai. I think everybody knows the Red Cross now. Okay. Well, in France, MSF has that reputation now. Um, and everybody in France knows it. So, yeah. So that's how I knew the organization. Yes, yes. And I knew the work they do. So they send they send the doctor to the developing country. Yes. Oh, I see. Yes. But you see, interestingly, myself, uh, initially with MSF, I wanted to work, um, mainly in Africa. Oh, I see. In situation of real crisis, such as war, mm -hmm. conflicts, refugee situation, mm -hmm. providing services in those medical aid in those kind of situations. But then finally, when I became a doctor mm -hmm. and that I was available to join MSF, mm -hmm. they said, well, we need you mm -hmm. to work on HIV oh. because I did HIV training. Mm -hmm. During my med school. Oh, you have HIV. Yeah, I had experience in HIV during med school mm -hmm. and during my internship. Oh, you're doing internship. So they wanted a doctor, uh, they were looking for different doctors. So some of us uh, were sent for that. So they wanted doctors who had experience mm -hmm. treating HIV to start those new projects. Mm -hmm. And so they said, Well, we'd like you to go to Thailand. And I said, Oh, really? Uh, and I said, well, okay, well, if you need me in Thailand, then I will go to Thailand. And then life took a different mm -hmm. turn, and I eventually stayed in Thailand for uh, quite some time. Oh, yeah. very cool. Yeah, that's very really cool. Should, should, should I um, modify this question about mm -hmm. your, motiva your inspiration and your motivation to Help, help, help people like migrants, refugee, or or some to to develop uh to develop the the healthcare in developing country. Should should I move? You can that? ask that. No problem. Yes, no yes, problem. yes. I can yes. add 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 the question. Yeah. That, like, what is? Well, you see, uh, so I started with HIV yeah. disease and programs mm -hmm. with MSF. And so the first time was in Thailand, mm -hmm. in Surrey. Mm -hmm. And as I said, working really well. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I asked MSF to do the same in Africa. Oh, I so I was sent to Malawi to do that mm -hmm. bigger project. Mm -hmm. But then after that, for personal reason and life reason, uh, with my wife, we came back to Thailand, and at that time, mm -hmm. I was not based in Surin anymore. Uh -huh. I was coordinator of the MSF mm -hmm. project in Thailand, mm -hmm. and MSF was in, in charge of healthcare mm -hmm. in refugee camps oh, okay. in, uh, along the Thai Myanmar border. Oh. So, you know, there are refugee camps, people from Myanmar mm -hmm. who have been living in Thak, Mae Hong Song, in refugee camps for a long time. Okay. And NGOs such as Médecins Sans Frontières, mm -hmm. MSF, provide healthcare services oh, okay. to those refugees. So I became the medical coordinator of those projects. Oh. And provided yes services for this population, and then after that, MSF left Thailand. Mm -hmm. uh, I stayed in Thailand, mm -hmm. and later on decided that I wanted to do projects mm -hmm. for migrants, oh, okay. different types of projects for migrant healthcare, mm -hmm. and then later on created my own organization mm -hmm. to run projects for this population. And um, I view those population as people in great need mm -hmm. of healthcare services. Mm -hmm. So it just follows what I was doing since the beginning, 
just evolved in a different mm -hmm. format and way. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, uh, the next question, could you please share your experience in working with a non-profit organization that focuses on developing human life, for instance, Medicine Sans Frontières, uh, FHI, Impact, and FAR, and the Thai Race Course? Mm. Um, well, you see, these different organizations are different, mm -hmm. of course they do about the same time of broad work mm -hmm. which is medical care, medical mm -hmm. services mm -hmm. for people in need, poor people, marginalized communities mm -hmm. but it's quite broad still mm -hmm. different structure, different mm -hmm. funding mm -hmm. uh, schemes different organization mm -hmm styles mm -hmm. so you cannot say the same everywhere but overall what i like with these organizations is the impact they make oh, the, impact. the impact is very important and for me it was important to always work for an organization that achieves impact mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but then uh, some of them are all of them have their limitation oh. Some of them are not that well organized. Oh, not that okay. Not organized. Not that well organized. Well, that's that was organized. So, like every other entity or company mm -hmm. or institution, sometimes well things don't work uh -huh. so well. So sometimes I was a bit disappointed with that. Mm -hmm. This organization, mm -hmm. uh, and some of these organizations depend. Mm -hmm on maybe that's the most important some of these organizations depend on funding mm -hmm. from governments for example oh, government fund. and that's not the case of msf oh. msf is funded by private donors private donor oh. And it means by donation. And it means that MSF has that financial ability and independence to do anything, oh. anywhere, oh. when it thinks it's, it's important and can quickly react. When you work for an organization that is funded by government, mm. well, you can only do things that the, the governments will Oh, okay. allow you to do oh, okay. and sometimes that prevents you from doing the things that you believe are the most important oh. or sometimes it means that it will not be reactive because you need mm -hmm. to apply for money mm -hmm. get the money and then oh. you can do the work and sometimes that's hard to do oh, like you need to ask permission from the you government you need to ask permission and you need yeah. to ask the funding Oh, so that can limit uh, your ability to do things mm -hmm. or your reactivity to do it quickly. Mm -hmm. But in the model of MSF, that's the strength of MSF is that they are financially independent. Yes, that's and that's an enormous mm -hmm. strength that MSF has. Financial independence is extremely important. This is great. <laughs> yes, and you see, for example, if you speak of some organizations that depend on government funding, mm -hmm. um, sometimes mm -hmm. the government can say, well, we will provide service. The governments will uh, decide that organizations that they found can do projects for poor people and support safe abortion. Mm -hmm. And sometimes government will say, no, you cannot do that anymore. Oh, okay. You see, and so your organization is totally dependent yes, of the money you get and mm -hmm. the authorization you get to do mm -hmm. certain services or not do them. Oh, okay. Some organizations could say, some governments could say, well, we uh, allow you to give harm reduction services for people who inject drugs mm -hmm. 
and another government later could say we should not you should not do that mm -hmm. so that same organization mm -hmm. can be in a very different position based on governments yeah, and administrations that support it so that's very important to know mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, next, could could you share us about the organization that you have uh, found and your current work? Yes. Yes. So, after working for different organizations like this, um, I decided to create my own organization. And that organization is called Bream Lockmans. Yes. My name is slightly complicated. It's a combination of Bream and development. Mm -hmm. And um, I did that, um, well, the story is a little bit long, but to run development a little bit the way I was seeing it. Mm -hmm. Uh, and to run specific projects mm -hmm. in particular. Mm -hmm. One of them being the Migrant Fund, the migrant M Fund, fund M as we call it. M fund, yeah. by the and the Migrant Fund and Brim Lockman's is to, well, I should say no first. Brim Lockman's is a social enterprise. Mm -hmm. And for me, that was very important to send a message to whoever I can send it to, mm -hmm. to say, well, we have a company mm -hmm. that works for society, mm -hmm. not for money, for society. for society. And I believe that if more companies in this world mm -hmm. were working for society mm -hmm. rather than money, mm -hmm. then we would live in a much better place. Mm -hmm. So that was one. Mm -hmm. And then specifically for the migrant fund, he was working specifically for people in big need mm -hmm. for access to healthcare, mm -hmm. migrants mm -hmm. who don't have access to services, mm -hmm. but doing a project that allows to become independent. Mm -hmm. A low cost health insurance mm -hmm. that after a while, can run by itself and be independent and self-sustained mm -hmm. so that, as I said before, you don't depend mm -hmm. on government money okay. to do or, don't, or not do certain things. Yeah, so that was the motivation and the purpose and we pursue that. Yeah. But it's not easy, of course. <laughs> This, this question you really like to, to share about uh, what is M Fund doing and another project like the C3. Yeah. Or would you like to, to share more about uh, what is the two, two projects? So, these two projects that mm -hmm. Brim mm -hmm. run, mm -hmm. these are the only two projects we run right yes. now. And these are quite big and we're quite busy. So right now, that's what we do. They are quite different. Mm -hmm. But the one thing that is common to these two projects is that they um, address the needs of what we say most marginalized mm -hmm. population. M found is for migrant workers. Mm -hmm. C3 is for people who use drugs. Mm -hmm. Those population are often, well, they are marginalized, as mm -hmm. I said, left out of healthcare system mm -hmm. and discriminated mm -hmm. in accessing healthcare services. Mm -hmm. So we run projects that try to address that. Mm -hmm. The M Fund is a low cost non-profit health insurance. Mm -hmm. And as I said before, we aim to become independent, self-sustained. Mm -hmm. financially and the reason why we create that project is because you know in Thailand Thai citizens mm -hmm. have free healthcare True. which is wonderful yeah. 
migrant workers in Thailand. Mm -hmm. There are about 4 million of migrant workers, mm -hmm. mainly from Myanmar, mm -hmm. but Cambodia a okay. Those who have work permits mm -hmm. and legal stay mm -hmm. normally have health insurance from the government. Sure. Normally. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they don't mm -hmm. because for different reasons. Mm -hmm. But sometimes they don't have insurance. Sure. And then you have also some migrants who don't have mm -hmm. documents mm -hmm. to stay legally in Thailand. But they stay in Thailand anyway. And they work in Thailand anyway. True. Construction sites, yes. factories, mm -hmm. farm, different things. Mm -hmm. Why they have and or not have documents is not our problem. Mm -hmm. They live in Thailand and when they don't have documents mm -hmm. like this, they don't have health insurance. True. So if they are sick, they cannot go to a hospital. True. So in Thailand, almost everybody has access to healthcare except some migrant workers mm -hmm. and our goal was to allow mm -hmm. to give access to services to these people mm -hmm. in a way that they can afford mm -hmm. and so M fund is a low cost non-profit mm -hmm. health insurance for those who don't have health insurance so that's M fund C3 is different uh, because C3 is termed as a research project mm -hmm. to develop a new model mm -hmm. of care mm -hmm. for people who need care, mm -hmm. people who use drugs. Mm -hmm. And you see people who use drugs, sometimes when they go to hospital, mm -hmm. Thai people you know, mm -hmm. who use drugs, when they go to hospital, well, sometimes doctors or nurses will say, well, they don't really provide friendly services or don't provide services sometimes. Mm -hmm. And um, people who inject drugs mm -hmm. have high risk of HIV infection mm -hmm. and also hepatitis C. Mm -hmm. Hepatitis C is a virus mm -hmm. that is transmitted by blood. Mm -hmm. People who inject drugs, almost all of them have hepatitis C. Mm -hmm. And now hepatitis C can be cured mm -hmm. with treatment, mm -hmm. very expensive treatment, like mm -hmm. HIV a long time back. Mm -hmm. The problem is that those medicines are not available mm -hmm. because they are expensive. And on top of that, even if they are available, drug users mm -hmm. would hardly get them. Oh, okay. So what we developed is a model of care where we work with local organization mm -hmm. that help those people mm -hmm. and we develop a model of community mm -hmm. care and treatment of hepatitis C mm -hmm. for this population okay. and hope to show to uh, our government partners, mm -hmm. Ministry of Public Health, mm -hmm. help to show that you can provide treatment to this population, mm -hmm. they will take those treatment, mm -hmm. they will be cured of hepatitis C, mm -hmm. you help them save their lives, mm -hmm. and you help control mm -hmm. transmission of that disease mm -hmm. in the community and for the public. So you control disease. Mm -hmm. And so if we show to our government partners and with our government partners that you can do that, well then the government can say, ah, okay, mm -hmm. that's good. Yeah. We can extend that. Okay. That's yeah. the goal. Okay. Yeah. Those are very good projects. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Um, so, the next question yeah. What is your favorite motto or phrase? <laughs> yes, my favorite motto is a sentence from Gandhi. Mm -hmm. Mahatma Gandhi. Be the change that you want to see in this world. Be the change, change that you want to see in this world. Want to see in this world. That's my best sentence. Mahatma Gandhi. 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 Mahatma Gandhi.
question. Like, what is your hobby? Uh, music. Music, okay. Sport. Sports? Yes. Uh, what, what kind of music and what kind of sports? Uh, I wish I could be a good guitar player. Uh, oh, that's great. But I don't have enough, I'm not good at music. I like it, but I'm not good at music. And I don't have enough time. To practice music but because besides my work I have also three children okay. but hopefully one day I can spend more time mm -hmm. to play music mm -hmm. uh, and sport is my second hobby uh, I wish I could have more time mm -hmm. to do more sports oh, okay. uh, but I just started to do a bit more sports because That's now okay. I'm 50 years old yes. <laughs> And at 50 years old, it's important to maintain good health. Yes. So good health comes also with sports. Yes. So I started to do more sports. Okay. I run. For exercise. Yes, okay. exercise, okay. sports, okay. cap. Okay. Thank you. Um, is there any project you want to do in the future? Um, yes. Mm -hmm. We <coughs> are working, it stays in the same line as M Farm and C3 basically. Mm -hmm. uh, those projects, those two projects are growing mm -hmm. in Thailand. Mm -hmm. And we are working to extend M Found and C3 mm -hmm. across mm -hmm. Southeast Asia. Mm -hmm. In Myanmar, well, M Found, we already work in Myanmar. Oh, Yes, is in Miawadi. Yes, so we work in M Found is run in Miawadi, oh, which is on the other side of the border from oh. Tak and Mesot. Oh, side just on the other side of the border. Just nearby. Oh, yeah. Just nearby. So okay. M Found runs in Miawadi also. Oh, and our goal is to extend M Found to many more migrants mm -hmm. and border population in Thailand, Myanmar, Cambodia, Laos, oh, even Malaysia, because there are many migrants and refugees oh, in Malaysia. Our neighboring border. Neighboring countries, yes, yeah. exactly. Uh, many migrants and refugees mm -hmm. like this who are in the same mm -hmm. situation as some migrants in Thailand, mm -hmm. they don't have health insurance. They cannot access healthcare services, mm -hmm. or if they can, they don't have the money for mm -hmm. it. Okay. So we are working to extend M Found across the region, mm -hmm. and C Free the same, mm -hmm. because C Free works well in Thailand. So mm -hmm. we are working with partners to open more sites for mm -hmm. C Free inside Thailand. And also now in other countries in the region, mm -hmm. Indonesia, Malaysia, Myanmar, Cambodia, mm -hmm. um, Vietnam. Yeah, okay. So that's our goal now is to basically take those two projects to a regional scale. Okay. And if we do that, or when we do that, mm -hmm. well, what comes next we will see. Mm -hmm. But that's already a big goal, so that's our priority right now. Cap. Oh, okay. Okay, thank you very much. So, if you have more questions, I would like to ask about like, how can you let like, those people like in my get look in border mm -hmm. to know of your service? Mm -hmm. uh, yes. <laughs> so, the way we work is we have community workers from those communities who we employ and they work with their communities to number one, provide information about M Found. Uh -huh. So they go door to door and in community centers mm -hmm. in their communities to inform their peer mm -hmm. about M Found, what is M Found, what it gives, how it works. It's a voluntary scheme. Those who want to join can join. Those who don't want to join can, uh, can uh, decide not to join. If they decide to join, all our community workers have a smartphone mm -hmm. or a tablet and we created an application, web application, 
where the community workers can take some information, enroll those people into MFound, and then we have a whole system of electronic member card, QR codes, mm -hmm. the whole system works like that, and then people can be, um, can present to partner hospitals, be identified as members of MFound, and then the hospitals will provide them services and will give us the bill. Mm -hmm. That's how it works. Mm -hmm. So it's mainly peer to peer. Mm -hmm. Migrants from communities, we employ them and they reach out to their peers. Oh, yeah. fantastic. Yeah. That's good, thanks. Yeah. We may have finished the, the question. Yeah. Uh, one question. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Um, I just want to know, I, I'm not sure that it's, it's too sensitive or not. Like, okay. if um, the doctor want to join, okay, so if they have a they want to do the volunteer, they uh -huh. can join through the website or your um, social, like the migrant center or something, right? Yes, uh, volunteers, um, I see it depends. If mm -hmm. you speak of a medical doctor who is trained mm -hmm. and licensed as a medical doctor, well, it depends on positions that we have opened. Uh, we right now have, well, few medical doctors in the organization. Mm -hmm. If you start with C3, mm -hmm. we have a Thai American and a Thai physician mm -hmm. involved in C3. Mm -hmm. They have experience in clinical research mm -hmm. and in research projects. Mm -hmm. So they have two roles. Mm -hmm. They uh, help me run the research project and they also provide medical care mm -hmm. for C3 patients and participants yeah. in uh, the places where we run C3 in the community. Yeah. So that's one. Yeah. And we employ those physicians based on the needs and mm -hmm. positions that we open. Yeah. So like right now for C3 it's enough. Yeah. Um, in the future, it's possible that some of them go, and we would reopen mm -hmm. position. Oh, okay. Volunteer physician, uh, why not? Mm -hmm. For particular activities, to do particular analysis, mm -hmm. or to help to do publication, mm -hmm. analyze our data, um, or why not volunteering to do some of the consultation? That's mm -hmm. possible too. Yeah. That's very possible too. Yes, yes, yes. It is possible, yes, that you would have readers who say, oh, that's nice, I like it, I can do some clinics mm -hmm. uh, and volunteer for that. We would welcome that. Mm -hmm. um, it would need to be doctors who are licensed mm -hmm. to practice medicine in Thailand. Mm -hmm. sure, sure. um, in MFAM, mm -hmm. We have, because we don't in MFound mm -hmm. provide direct services, I would say, we work with partner hospitals, mm -hmm. Thai government hospitals, mm -hmm. to provide services. Mm -hmm. So we have some medical doctors who are staff, but who do like the management. Mm -hmm. And of course, being doctors helps a lot to manage those projects because, mm -hmm. well, you need to analyze the medical events that we cover, sometimes visit patients mm -hmm. that we cover. In partner hospitals. Mm -hmm. Volunteers, um, possibly, mm -hmm. to help do specific activities. We have had also medical students. Oh, medical students. We have here. had, yes, we have had medical students. We have had um, public health students mm -hmm. come to do internship mm -hmm. with us for um, eight weeks. 10 weeks, 12 weeks, and in those cases, we like to have medical uh, well, students mm -hmm. who can work on a very specific project mm -hmm. for a short period of time, mm -hmm. uh, give us the benefit of that. Is it a research question? Well, it depends, can be different things. Recently, we had a, an MPH student, oh. Master in Public Health. Oh, okay. She it was a lady and she wanted to have a research topic mm -hmm. for her thesis. She came to know about MFOUND. Oh, okay. She wanted to analyze some of the data mm -hmm. 
and we wanted ourselves mm -hmm. to utilize our data better. Mm -hmm. So she looked at our whole database and looked at the characteristics of our members, the number of services they have received, the cost of services, mm -hmm. and a whole range of other indicators. So she worked on that, it took her about eight weeks, yes. Mm -hmm. And then she wrote a report mm -hmm. for her master and she wrote a report for us and she analyzed data in a way that we didn't have before. So it's very useful then for us to continue to improve our project. Oh, okay. So students is good for us. Mm -hmm. yes, yes. Uh, Would you like to share uh, the clinical research that uh, some, some project could be confidential if you don't want to share, it's okay. Yes. Uh, 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 your clinic, clinical research. Uh, Ye yes, because you see C3. Mm -hmm. C3 is run mm -hmm. uh, as a research project. Mm -hmm. In order for us to be able to show to our partners, mm -hmm. government partners and donors, that mm -hmm. it really works, mm -hmm. that way of providing care. Mm -hmm. We need to collect very detailed information. Mm -hmm. And also, the medicine for hepatitis C mm -hmm. that we use, mm -hmm. uh, when we started the project, those medicines were not available in Thailand. Mm -hmm. So the only way we could use those medicines and be allowed by Thai FDA mm -hmm. or your The only way we were able to use those medicines was as part of a research project. And so the model of care we developed is framed as a research project with an ethical approval also by ethics committee. And we collect very detailed information mm -hmm. about the outcome of treatment, mm -hmm. efficacy mm -hmm. or effectiveness, safety. Mm -hmm. And then we document those data mm -hmm. outcomes and share with government partners, donors, publish Mm -hmm. and say it works because we have data that show that it works. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's run as a research project. It's okay. a research project on a new model of care. Uh, okay. 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 Hey, may I ask about the fund that you have now, the, the funding in, in your project and your clinical research project? Yes. Mm -hmm. So M found mm -hmm. Um, and C3, uh, some of it is the same mm -hmm. funding source, some of it is different. Mm -hmm. For M Found, mm -hmm. we have had um, funding from uh, different donors. Mm -hmm. Historically, we have had funding from UNICEF. Oh, yes. UNICEF helped us at the beginning. Mm -hmm. We received funding from the French government, French also government. Uh, a mechanism called Initiative, Initiative. from the French uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Mm -hmm. They found projects of development like this, of uh, assistance to development. Uh, and then we received yeah. funding also from something called the Global Fund. The Global Fund. And the Global Fund is an international funding mechanism that supports projects to treat HIV, tuberculosis and malaria for people who need it most and that includes marginalized population such as drug users or migrant workers. And because we run projects for migrant workers then Global Fund funded the M Fund because it allows to sustain services for these people. C3, slightly different because we received funding from uh, USAID, the US government, for a partner organization called FHI. That is one. And the second part of the funding is also from the Global Fund because we provide in C3, we provide services oh. for drug users, HIV and hepatitis C. So this is highly relevant to the mission of the Global Fund. Okay. So these are the main source of funding. 
We do have for M Fund, we have some private donation. Mm -hmm. We have some supporters, mm -hmm. people who are individual donors mm -hmm. every month. Mm -hmm. They give a small amount of money. Mm -hmm. um, and it's available to our website. Mm -hmm. uh, supporters of M Fund. We have had some companies mm -hmm. giving us some money mm -hmm. as part of corporate social responsibility. Uh, CSR, yes. yes. So some companies have provided that, mm -hmm. many at the beginning, mm -hmm. um, and that's that's mm -hmm. that's it basically. Mm -hmm. One more question, please. Uh, could you talk a little bit about the financial independence? So how can you prioritize which project is more important? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, good question. So MSF has a board of administration and also operation teams mm -hmm. and operation managers. And there is a whole hierarchy of executive mm -hmm. managers in MSF. And so they collectively, and then with field operations, people who are on the ground in existing projects, then they assess the needs, they follow information, mm -hmm. and they collectively decide, well, okay, that context in that country requires an intervention. Intervention is implemented. Sometimes situation evolves. At one point, they can assess that, well, the situation no longer requires MSF's intervention and they stop and MSF has traditionally focused a lot on emergency situation and they tend to stick to that sometimes it's hard to decide when do you stop in emergency situations HIV was a different story because HIV is not an emergency or it was an emergency, but it was to be a long-term emergency. Mm -hmm. Because once you start HIV treatment, you have to continue. Yes. So that was a whole new story for MSF. But then MSF decided that it was a crisis anyway. Mm -hmm. And that it required MSF intervention. Mm -hmm. So it's the board of administration, it's the executive managers of uh, MSF, it's the field teams who report particular needs and situations, and that's how it's decided. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let me ask some private question. Like I, I got the, uh, the, um, the scholarship from French Embassy to do the postdoc in France, and I, I we have met um, the uh, ambassador also. Yes. And I think I saw you. I saw your photo in the website. Is that because you get the, the fund yes. from the French government, right? Yes. So, so that's why I saw yes. your photo with the ambassador. With the ambassador, yes. So as I said, for M Fund, we mm. receive funding and it continues mm. now. Mm. Uh, so it started several years mm. ago and continues now. Mm. We receive a funding from a mechanism called mm. Initiative. Mm. And that's a funding initiative from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Oh, okay. And of course, then the yeah. Somha representative mm -hmm. of uh, that initiative in the country is the ambassador. Oh, okay. So when we got the funding and the agreement, mm -hmm. uh, well, the ambassador was mm -hmm. the person uh, who signed mm -hmm. uh, with us and that gave us visibility, mm -hmm. credibility, it gives also to uh, France mm -hmm. that visibility oh, that uh, the French government supports those oh. projects and actions. So, oh, yes, we signed the contract project. with the ambassador oh, and okay. at the embassy, at the and embassy. They, mm -hmm. uh, the embassy used it for communication, and we used that for communication. Oh, okay, thank you very much. Yes. Yeah. That's good coincidence. Yes. That's very impressive. Well, thank you very much. Uh, these are all the questions. Okay, very nice. Well, it was an hour.